everyone, and welcome to this bonus edition of Church in Maine, the podcast for people interested in the intersection of faith in our modern world. I'm Dennis Sanders, your host. Church in Maine is a podcast that looks for where God is at work among all of the issues that are affecting church and the larger society. To learn more about the podcast, listen to past episodes, and to donate, check us out at churchinmaine.org. And you can also visit us at churchandmain.substack.com. Uh, there you can find some articles that I've written, um, and you can also find episodes there as well. As always, I like to remind people to, uh, w- to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast app. And once you do that, also consider leaving a review. That helps others find the podcast. So my prior episode... Um, with uh, Steve uh, Thomason, I talked a little bit about um, the challenge of spiritual practices when you are on the spectrum. Um, As many of you know, I have been diagnosed with both ADHD and um, um, what used to be called Asperger's. And um, that has always made it a challenge um, to have regular devotions. but there are ways around that. Um, today, you're going to be hearing um, actually an interview from about a year ago. Um, and this is actually for, uh, it's not a podcast, it's actually for a uh, YouTube uh, uh, channel uh, at the, where I work at Faith Lutheran Church in Forest Lake, Minnesota. Um, the deacon there, who was actually a uh, guest about maybe almost two years ago, um, on the podcast, uh, Deacon Nina Joygard does a uh, kind of a series called um, Prayer Lab, and she does kind of a sub series that's called Prayer Lab on the Road. Um, and that one, she actually talks to people who are part of Faith Lutheran um, just to find out what are their spiritual practices. And about a year and a half ago, she uh, interviewed me, and I talked about being on the spectrum and having ADHD and what does that look like trying to um, be able to have spiritual kind of have regular spiritual practices when it can be a challenge Um, you can kind of lose attention very quickly um, when you're trying to do something uh, trying to to read scripture or even pray so um, the original, the interview that she did lasted maybe about 10 minutes and she kind of whittled it down to maybe about three minutes, but um, I have the kind of full interview and want to uh, share that with you. Basically just to, as a way of helping others who might be on the spectrum, I have ADHD, um, because I think um, what Steve said is important. Spiritual practice does matter. It doesn't, it's not just for people who are our pastors, I think it is for everyone because our relationship with God is just that, a relationship. And to do that, you have to have regular time with God. So I hope that you listen to this episode. It's about, I said, about 10 minutes. Um, uh, Before I go to that, just a reminder that I have um, added um, ways that you can donate. Um, You can either donate via Venmo um, and or you can donate uh, via tip top jar um, and information on how to donate and you can donate any amount um, are in the show notes but uh, with that here is the interview I had for Pearl Lab Minute on the Road with Deacon Nina Jorgard uh, from early in 2023 enjoy Deacon Nina here with our next installment of Prayer Lab Minute on the Road. And I'm here today with Dennis Sanders. Dennis is our communications manager at Faith, but you're so much more than that, Dennis. Tell us us a little bit about what else you are and where we are, where we're on the road today. Well, we're at Roseville Lutheran Church, um, and that's where I am on Sundays. I am, um, besides being the communications manager at Faith, I'm also... Um, a pastor, I'm ordained in the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, and I'm pastor of uh, First Christian Church of St. Paul. 
And we've been meeting here at Roseville Lutheran Church in um, what they now call the Great Hall and was one of their, one of their first sanctuaries um, since August. So I'm usually here uh, during the week on Wednesdays and Fridays and then, of course, on Sundays for worship. Nice. All right. Thanks, Dennis. So, Dennis, I know um, you have a unique practice you like to do for prayer. Would you tell us a little bit about about what it is that you like to do for prayer? Yeah, what I like to do for prayer um, is basically to listen to podcasts. And there's kind of a, a method to the madness here. Yeah, let us um, in, let us in. <laughs> so about maybe 15 years ago or so, I was um, diagnosed with um, Asperger's, which is kind of on the autism spectrum. Mm-hmm. And then a few years ago, I was also diagnosed with um ADHD or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Mm-hmm. And usually those two things are, are comorbid. So they kind okay. of come together in many, in, for many people. So what that means for me is that it's really hard for me to focus on things. So I've always kind of joked that there are always these people that like kind of, you know, well, I've sat in silence for 40 minutes and was able to really commune with God. And it's like, yeah, that the two minutes and I'm kind of like, Oh, Pitchy. Pitchy. <laughs> what, what, what is, did I leave the, the light on and this? And so I'm always kind of thinking about other things. So it was always hard for me to really focus on things. And early on years ago, I, I decided when I wanted to find something that could help me in spending time with God where I could actually kind of have some time of focusing, but it, it didn't require me to just have to sit still. And, yeah. um, so I started to look at, at podcasts and the, one of the first ones that I did was, um, one that's called pray as you go. Okay. Um, and this was, is produced by, um, Jesuits in, in the UK okay. and it's about a 15, 20 minute podcast where there is song, there's kind of time for reflection and there's the reading of scripture. And so usually at the end of the day, I would um, kind of, you know, while my husband is asleep, I would kind of put on my um, um, earpods and, and listen. Yeah. And um, that would be a way of kind of kind of focusing in on what was the scripture saying. Yeah. And it's not perfect. I'm still at times will will wander my mind will wander off on something, but it was a way of kind of focusing in and and really I think helpful in, in helping me actually be able to spend time with God. And I love that you sort of experimented with something that works for you. Yeah. It's not, I mean, prayer shouldn't be a cookie, cookie cutter sort no, of experience. No, no. Um, and yeah, that's really, I mean, it's really cool. Yeah. And it sounds like having just that thing to listen to gave you something to like center on besides just your own trying to stay still. Exactly. Or staying, trying to stay quiet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, Another thing that I've, I've done, it's kind of a tradition. It's harder to do it, but years ago, the, the Presbyterians had this podcast that was called Listen to the Word, uh, or Hear the Word, I should say. And it was, um, I would always want to find their Good Friday um, podcast because it was um, from John. And it was the, the Passion. And the that one, thing. yeah. So yeah. it's about two chapters, and it was a good half hour and it was a great time. I would come, usually, um, the church where I was serving at the time, um, I would come and find a place either to sit down or sometimes I would even just walk. Yeah. But it was a time to really, on that time, uh, that day, to just focus and hear that story. And it was always kind of a special time. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people can sometimes sit in a church service and they have that. But again, because of the way that how my brain works, it just doesn't always work that way. And this was the way that I felt like I could connect yeah. with that story and connect with 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 God at that time. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I I love that you can do it. You know, like you mentioned, you first started doing it headphones, like at night. I mean, I can just imagine like chill out in the darkness. But also, you can take it for a walk, or when yes. you're in an airport traveling, or mm-hmm. you know. You name it, yeah. right? That um, it's a it's a mobile tool, yeah, to and help you in that connection. Yeah, because you can kind of take it every anywhere. I mean, I've I've listened to it while I'm driving. I've mm-hmm. um, listened to it 
while I'm on a plane, um, or you know, when I'm at work at Faith, or even here at, at Roseville, it that's kind of the thing. It, it opens you up to anything, any place. Um, and the one that I'm actually doing more recently is um, one that's called a morning at the office, <laughs> and it's um, by an Episcopal group called um, a Forward Movement. Okay. And so, and basically, if if you're familiar with kind of what they call a daily office, mm -hmm. that's what they do. Okay. And so, for 15 minutes, they go through the whole thing of the daily office, and you just again listen to it in that way. Um, and I think again. I like that I'm able to kind of listen to it. I'm able to kind of focus in on what the scriptures are saying um, and the prayers and um, be active in doing other things um, without fe and, and feeling that I can be included in this. Because I think early on years ago when I was still a kid and trying to do things like devotions, it was always hard and I felt mm -hmm. I can't do this. And this was a way that I could. Yeah. That's beautiful. What encouragement would you give to folks who are listening or watching who, you know, maybe they have a similar diagnosis as you, mm -hmm. or maybe they resonate with the like, yeah, I can't sit so be quiet. Like that's just not, that's not who I'm, I'm created to be. What kind of encouragement um, or advice might you offer someone who's like really keyed in right now? Like, Oh, let me see. <laughs> I want to hear, I want to hear more about this. Yeah, I would say find something that works for you. Um, there are lots of different podcasts out there. There might be different apps that are available. Yeah, I was going to say, Pray As You Go has an app now. Yeah, I have that. exactly. Yeah. Um, another one that is is worthwhile and it's incredibly short is and it has an app is are the Moravian Daily Texts. Mm. And those are incredibly short. It's really just short. It's like two, one verse. Yeah, one or two yeah. verses and a very short prayer. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can get that done in like two minutes okay. and just find different things and, and maybe if you know find something even create something maybe it's taking a walk maybe it's doing something that you can do that that fits you mm -hmm. um, but I think that the thing is don't give up try something and figure out what works for you um, and realize that well, maybe it works for someone else isn't going to work for you and that's okay is there anything else you want to share or say? Yeah, you know, I think for someone that is on the spectrum is to know that, you know, again, there are ways that you can commune with God. It may not be the way that everyone else has communed, but we're kind of different people anyway. And, and find, again, that God has made us differently. Mm -hmm. And so find the way that you feel that God can allow you to commune with God mm -hmm. and, and know that and know that, that God is okay with how you are working this out and how you are trying to figure things out. Um, and that God is with you in all of this. Yeah. It's, I mean, that's the whole, like, for me, that's the whole thought behind prayer lab exactly. is experimenting yeah. and there's going to be things that work and there's going to be things that don't work. And, we learn from all of those things mm -hmm. and we grow in all of those things. Exactly. It's not that every single thing is going to fit me or mm -hmm. fit you. Yeah. So, and I think, you know, again, it, life, especially on the spectrum is an experiment. <laughs> I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful to try new things. And, um, I'm just thankful that God has kind of helped me to find a way to, to continue that relationship with God. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, this was lovely. Thank you, Dennis. I think, um, your story is just, I'm so grateful for you for sharing your story because I think it will really connect with people and give us some things to experiment with. All right. I may be coming to your headphones next. <laughs>